Okay, uh, good evening to all the participants. I think I'm audible to everyone. So today is uh, day 10. So we'll be discussing on molecular phylogeny, especially the methods for determination of phylogenetic trees. So we discuss character-based methods and distance-based methods. And uh, we also discuss uh, a method called UPGMA on today. Okay, also we can see some hands-on experience. I can see uh, how much we can able to complete on today. If not completed, these concepts will be discussed on the next session, the last session that is on day 11th on molecular phylogeny. Okay, now let me, uh, before going to today's session contents on UPGMA, and uh, that is distance based methods and character based methods. Can we recap the last session contents? So, as usual, what are the last session topics, major topics we discussed in the last session? That uh, phylogenetic tree, uh, we have seen three types of molecular clock theory. So along with phylogenetic tree, we also discussed something like evolutionary tree. We discussed even how to select the method based on the phylogeny flow chart. That is method for tree construction based on uh, phylogeny flow chart. And we have seen the methods of tree construction as character based and distance based methods. But so overall, we discussed about phylogenetic basics, trees, uh, molecular clock theory, and types of trees. Very good. So we have also discussed uh, rooted tree and unrooted tree. And we also classify, uh, uh, seen the parts of the tree. And we also classified based on the types of, so I, I can ask you one more question. What is the type of output we derive from phylogenetic trees? The type of output we call, we call in phylogenetic trees. After the, developing a phylogenetic trees, so what we call that kind of an output? The output we generate from the phylogenetic tree construction is called to remember phylogram. We have discussed phylogram and we have seen even the types of phylogram, isn't it? So if we are discussing only the character based, okay? Uh, that we call that as a cladistic approach. If you are constructing a tree only using the characters, we call that as cladistic approach. And the type of output what we see is the cladogram. Very good. If that is cladogram, and if you are focusing on construction of tree using both characters as well as distance, you know what is characters? Majorly, we call characters as the matches, matches of characters in the multiple sequence. OK, so if we call matches as characters and distance is generally mismatches and gaps. This uh, the total number of mismatches and gaps give you the genetic distance, gives you the distance value. So if we consider both characters as well as the distance, we call this as a phonetic approach. And the type of output what we generate, that is the type of tree what you see, is what we call it as a phenogram. Cladogram, phenogram, collectively call it as a cladogram. We also have outputs like dendrogram, curvogram, supogram. OK, there are types of outputs based on how we find the outputs. In, OK, so these are some of the uh, generally, if you see the kind of an output, we have to tell in the form of grams, that is phylogram, cladogram, tetrogram, like that. OK, and did we miss something else? So I think uh, we have discussed uh, the last session contents. Now today, we can go ahead on the distance-based method, especially uh, using the uh, UPGMA, how to construct trees using UPGME. OK, so I just recap uh, what exactly um, before going to the UPGME, I, I think I can also ask one more question. Can uh, someone pro uh, provide me 
that the uh, examples for distance space methods what are the distance space methods we have discussed for character based methods i can provide you the answer maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood so other than ecgme what are the other methods we have discussed which comes under distance based so these are the methods very good uh, these are the methods used for phylogenetic tree construction that is the nj we mean neighbor joining upgme unweighted pair group method of arithmetic mean and what else i think well tech students are uh, answering well how about the other college students very good minimum evaluation me meant for minimum evaluation oh ayo least sequential appa i think i am at a uh, least squares that is least squares method of least squares you heard about that okay weighted neighbor joint okay wait okay so try it well so and also fitch markolish fm method fitch markolish in character based we have maximum parsimony and maximum likelihood okay so these are some of the character based uh, one to two character based methods we have discussed okay now let me take you to the upgme method do remember in upgme we uh, have mentioned that this is one of the clustering method okay and if you see this this comes under sequential clustering algorithm and if you see the steps in upgme the first step is to start with things most similar and the second step is distances to this otu or computed as otu here i refer to operational taxonomic unit so actually if you have four sequences and if you want to generate a tree with the four sequences all the four sequences we call that as otus so we have four otus in consideration for construction of phylogenetic tree generally operation taxonomic unit is used for representing dna sequences for dna sequences we represent otu so if you have four dna sequences in comparison that means we are comparing four otus for construction of phylogenetic tree so distances to this otu are computed as arithmetic means and the third uh, third step okay our final step is you should form a new group of otu and you have to pick pair with the highest similarity okay so this is the third step and overall if you see this this is uh, we are using an average linkage clustering method in upgma okay now we have also seen this a venn diagram uh, like uh, if you pair a uh, two sequences one and two okay in uh, a venn diagram okay obviously you can find a tree like this and uh, for three and five are clubbed together in the in the venn diagram okay in another when uh, circle so obviously three and five are closely linked with each other in the tree and if you see three five or linked with four okay uh, when compared to one and two so you find three five is linked with the branch four and then three five four totally are linked with one and two so this is a kind of a rooted reconstruction okay now let me take you to the example so in generally uh, in uh, the examination they either they can provide a data like this the data here how you can find here is you can find uh, all the values uh, below the diagonal only you can find the values isn't it and if you see the diagonal values the diagonal values are shown as zero so uh what do you under infer from this this is a lower triangular matrix and if you see this data so if you have four sequences like a uh, for example if you are using uh human uh, insulin dna and b is uh, a kind of uh, uh, pig uh, dna pig insulin dna and this can be a uh, orangutan or some kind of a gorilla 
So if you have four different species, whatever four different species you have, you are representing as A, B, C, D uh, in the columns as well as in the rows, you are representing the same. If you compare A character and A, A sequence and A sequence, okay, for example, if you take a protein, I told you 110 amino acids are there in human, isn't it? If you take a protein, if you take a protein, 110 amino acids, and here also you have 110 amino acids, all are matches. You don't find any mismatches or gaps if you compare human insulin with the human insulin. So only you got like zero. And if you have a piggy insulin, and again you compare with the piggy insulin, even if you have 112 or 113 characters, and if you have 113 characters, and if all the 113 characters, if you are comparing again with the pig, okay, you don't have any mismatches. So generally, uh, if you have mismatches, if you have two mismatches, you give like two. If you have three mismatches, you give like three. Just because if you come, you are comparing the same sequences, okay, in the diagonal, you find uh, uh, the mismatches and gaps as zero. And so the genetic distance, what you feel as zero. And uh, if you compare A and B, for example, if you're comparing human and pig, and if you have eight mismatches or gaps together, okay, so we feel that as a genetic distance. So, so here they are filled as eight. And similarly, if you compare A and C, for example, human and chimpanzee, and if you have uh, seven mismatches, okay, and gaps together, then seven is uh, what you feel it as a genetic distance. Okay, so now we already have the values filled in lower triangular matrix. But sometimes, uh, even in the problem, they give you a sequences. For example, they can also give like sequence one, sequence two, sequence three and sequence four okay for example if uh, the sequences provided or i take a different color pen so if they provide sequences like a t c t for sequence one and for sequence two okay a t c t and for the sequence three a c c c and for sequence four okay you have a uh, c c c c okay i think you have sequences like this okay and if uh, you are asked to construct a phylogenetic tree our objective initially is to form a kind of a distance table so now i draw a distance table here so uh, you're going to draw a distance table. So how you draw a table? You draw a table like, uh, so totally how many? One, two, three, four, five columns. First column, second column, third column, fourth column, and fifth column, okay? So you have totally five columns. Now, totally how many rows? Five rows, isn't it? So you have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So totally we have, uh, now I take a different color. So I'm going to now fill the values. Okay. So first, initially, what we have A. B, C, the whatever I have, S1, S2, S3, I give like A, if I consider this as A, B, C, D, instead of S1, S2, S3, I'm going to give like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Okay, now I take a different color. Yeah, so initially you have to remember if you are filling the values as a lower triangular matrix, fill the values okay if you compare a and a obviously it is zero and if you compare b and b it's obviously zero and c and c zero and d and d zero just think like if you're comparing a sequence with the a sequence any mismatches will be there no a t c g a t c g so you have mismatches and gaps as zero similarly for b c d okay you got these values now you understand how you got these values now compare a and b how many mismatches are there only one mismatch is here Okay, G and C is a mismatch. So you fill it as one here. 
A and C. How many mismatches? Two mismatches. Uh, is it so? Yes. One is uh, here, okay, and the other is here. So you find two mismatches, C and C. So totally. And if you compare uh, uh, A and D, you have three mismatches. Now compare B and C. How many mismatches are there? So only one, isn't it? And B and D. So two mismatches. And C and D, how many mismatches? Only one. So that you fit. So this is how we frame a distance table. Okay. So if you are provided with the sequences, like here, whatever I mentioned here, for the sequences, this is the uh, uh, correct distance table. Using this distance table, you have to take steps uh, for construction of phylogenetic tree. You remember, I have showed you three steps of phylogenetic tree. Okay, you have to use the principles uh, by step by step. You got it? But uh, this table value is something different. Okay, just for making understanding, I'm just showing you the sequences and fill the distance table. So let me uh, erase this kind of a table. You understand? how the table is formed, the distance table. The distance table, whatever genetic distance you are filling is nothing but the number of mismatches and gaps. The number of matches you can't find in this distance table. So this is a distance-based method. So considering only Okay, now let me take it. Okay. okay, now see how the first step is taken. So the first step is to check for the uh, less number in the distance values. You should not consider zero. If you see the less number, the you can find in from A and C. In A and C, you can find seven. This is the Less, uh, less value when compared to any other values present in the distance matrix table. 7, which is present in A and C. So if you see A and C, the distance is 7. But the tree won't find uh, in the form of a linear line. You find tree generally in the form of bifurcation of two different branches. If you divide exactly, that is, what you have to do, you have to take an average. You are taking two sequences and you are constructing a tree. So you have to divide by how many trees uh, branching you are making. So you are uh, using two sequences A and C, so divide by two. Seven divided by two, what is the value? 3.5. Whatever 3.5 you get, okay, that is the value for each and every branch if you link A and C. So for constructing a phylogenetic tree for with uh, all the four sequences, you can't able to construct a tree with all the A, B, C, D. Initially, you have to construct uh, step by step. Okay, The first step is to link which uh, or the sequences uh, you, can, uh, you can link. So for this, you have to check the smallest value. From the smallest value, take the arithmetic mean and try to construct a tree. Now, next step is to go for uh calculating the arithmetic mean so before going for arithmetic mean you have to pair these two sequences as one OTU. initially you have this as OTU one and this is OTU three but now just because you formed a tree now a and c are clubbed together as a single OTU instead of two OTUs. okay ac is now one OTU. And you already have two more sequences which has yet to be linked. So that two OTUs will be giving in bottom B and D and B and D. So obviously you have to construct a revised matrix. Initially you have a matrix table like this. So if you consider this as M, and if you consider this matrix as M star, in this M star you have to pair uh, these two sequences as a single OTU AC. And whatever left out, you will be giving in rows and columns. And even if you compare AC and AC, obviously you get only 0. That is the distance you get as 0. 
and uh, obviously we know bnb compared with zero and dnb is also zero but we don't know how to fill these values you got 8.5 so how we got this this you have to go for arithmetic calculation okay so that is the average arithmetic mean you have to make it out so initially you are going to calculate a distance between a b and a c okay so you, if you want to link a b with a c okay so this is the formula m b a c is given as m b a plus m b c so because you have two sequences here and uh, two distance values here you can divide it by two if you have three distances values you have to divide by three so just because i have two divided by two so m b a what is m b a in b a you have eight okay don't say this uh, a b okay you don't have any values here don't look here so wherever you find values you have to give that okay so b a is eight here and b c b c nine so eight plus nine divided by two just because you have only lower triangular matrix just look through this okay don't go to the top one you definitely have values from the lower uh, side so you have to give the values now if you see the average you got like 8.5 now go to the next which is uh, to be uh, unfilled which is said uh, to be filled the acd is something new we have to calculate the arithmetic mean for that so for that m d a c is given as m d a plus m d c divided by 2 this is the formula arithmetic mean now m d a m d a is given here as 12 and m t c given as 11 so 12 plus 11 okay divided by 2 so you got like 11.5 so m b a c you got like m b a c you got as 8.5 fill it up here m d a c m t a c got as 11.5 fill it up here and the left out value what get to be filled is this value 14 how you got this 14 already you have b and d as 14 isn't it this is unchanged this value is unchanged so because you don't have any kind of a new thing okay whatever old value you have in the matrix one one that is m you have to fill it up here so this is how you filled as 14. okay now this step is completed now, after this step, you have to run all the three steps in cycle. Okay, if three steps are completed, then go for the uh, in the cycle. You have to start again from step one. So, if you see uh, the step one, the step one is to identify the less number in the distance values. If you compare these three values, 8.5, 11.5, and 14, the less value what we find here is 8.5. So this is the least value you find. So using this value, you have to construct a tree. This is the next step. So to construct a tree, okay. So what you can find, you find a relationship between, you are going to find a relationship between B and A C. Okay. You have if you have a B take uh, OTU and A C as another OTU, the total distance is 8.5. And if you break it up, how you get? You get like here initially 4.5, uh, uh, 4.25, and 4.25. Isn't it? AC 4.25 and BS 4.25. But instead of giving like AC here, so give this table, give this tree whatever you have constructed earlier. So what tree you have constructed earlier, if for AC, you get, uh, the distance value is fixed dot 3.5 and 3.5. Okay. So the left out value, that is 4.25 minus 3.5 is 0.75. The distance from here to here is 0.75. So you can give this 0.75 value here. Okay. And you can see the same kind of, uh, uh, instead of drawing this tree, you can uh, change uh, this tree like this because you already have a tree fragment so now what happened you are linking three sequences in a tree of course this is a kind of a rooted tree no doubt in that you are constructing a rooted tree using a fgma method now see this uh you already have a relationship i mean you already have 
a tree with the three sequences. What is left out? T. Still, you have to construct uh, with a, a fragment D. You don't know how you can able to construct a tree. So for this, you have to use the uh, third step. The third step, what we use here is this one. How we got this uh, thing? Actually, I can draw a table here. So initially, what you had, um, now you you grouped A, B, C as one OT. OK? So if you see a table, OK, you have grouped A, B, C as one OTU and D as another OTU. So if you see this table, OK, so A, B, C, A, B, C compared to 0, D and D compared to 0. Now only the left out value is this. This cell alone you have to fill. OK, this cell, that is A, B, C, D. Okay, so see this earlier formula. Similarly, like here, you have to fill like M, A, B, C, T. So, how this uh, arithmetic mean can be written? M, A, D plus M, B, D plus M, C, D. Just because I have three sequences here, so arithmetic mean is divided by three. What is M, A, D? So, M, A, D, here you have like 12. And for BD, you have 14 and CD is 11. So 12 plus 14 plus 11, the last row values divided by 3. So what you'll be getting here now, so th uh, 37 divided by 3. So 37 divided by 3 is obviously 12.33. Am I right? 12.33. So now what you infer from here, so the total uh, distance, that is, if you have A, B, C, okay, and if you have a D, so if you have one point to the another point, the total distance between D and A, B, C, what you find from here is 12.33. If this is the total distance value, if you are constructing a tree with the earlier fragment, what you have uh, constructed. So you have to see the here that if you break this, if you bifurcate it, okay, 12.33 divided by 2 is nothing but 6.17. Okay. If I can draw a tree, I can use a different color now. If I can extend my fragment like this, okay, and if I give a length like this, okay, for a D, so this is actually 6.17, OK? And the total length from here to here is 6.17. So you have to minus 6.17 minus 4.25, OK? So 7, 5, 2, and uh, you have uh, 11, 2, 9, uh, so 1.92. So the distance from here to here is 1.92. You understand? So this is how you draw a phylogenetic tree. So the phylogenetic tree construction is done step by step. There are totally three steps. So obviously, if you consider this as matrix, this is a matrix, a modified matrix M star. And here you can give this M double star. OK, so these are the steps. OK, so you have to construct a matrix and you have to fill the Values for the club OTUs, okay, and you should also periodically construct the tree and you match the trees with the immediate steps, okay, whatever you take in the cycle, and you form a final tree. This is the final tree you have to show. This is the output, one the output they are expecting in examination, okay. So, for drawing this tree, you have to use this algorithm. Any doubts you have? So, I can take you to the next slide and I can show you. Don't uh, see this. You get confusing. This is this is not the correct one. Uh, you don't see this, but see this. Okay, whatever we had, this is the correct tree we form. Got it? A, B, C, D. Okay. So now uh, just uh, uh, type uh, that you understand or not. Do you understand? So if you understand, you type like yes. 
or you want some step to be illustrated once again to understand yes or no yes one year one year two three okay anyone don't understand in any step you can ask me you can unmute and ask me. okay i think uh most of the participants immediately shut can you show the previous slide for one second okay i think you are learning new isn't it this is the previous slide i think you are learning first time i think she is making understand any doubts this is the previous slide and this is the immediate slide don't take the last uh, table and tree just limit up to this got it also going to receive a recorded video okay good Meha. so let me now take you to the uh next uh, example so you also have uh, other methods like upgma agglomerative okay it's like confusing but you won't get much in the examinations but uh, we have some methods also like uh, upgma is different and upgma agglomerative is different i have a problem actually so very complex of course uh, at least we can you have to remember to solve at least one problem okay now see this uh, same upgma method but here, if you see, uh, the data is somewhat complex. Okay, that I can able to erase. Erase it can be selected. No, not selected. Okay, think. Okay, you have a data like this. Okay, like uh, how you find it uh, data here. Just uh, I'm showing you. If you keep yes, only the eleven you have to keep it here. Ten you have to keep here. Thirteen here. Twelve here. I just show you. If you keep soy bean as yes and mung bean as m arabidopsis as a and oinithero as o okay but uh, you don't have yes instead they are mentioned like yam a o l and they're given values like three eight seven eleven seven not seven here i have to use it it is it so I also take uh, a kind of a black pen. So actually, you will find some irregularities, isn't it? If they give this kind of a table, OK, you find some kind of uh, how you can able to solve if, you, if they twist uh, the data like this. How to solve this problem? Any idea on this? Generally, if you compare S yes with S, yes, but what if the question is given like this? How to solve this problem? Can I give you a solution now? So initially, you have in, even if the data is given like this, and if they ask you to construct a phylogenetic tree, so just because they have given for soybean as S yes, and mung bean as M, Arabidopsis as A, Oenithra as O, but you also have an additional thing here in the row as liverwort, isn't it? If L, don't miss this. Similarly, here in bottom, so before going to that, I, I just draw a kind of a table, okay, so that it won't be confusing for you, okay. Okay, now let me fill the values. S, M, A, O, L. Okay, now I'm going to use this black pen. M, O, L. So I'm going to fetch the lines. Yeah, see. How to solve this? So you have to simply fill the values. So SNS 0, 0, 0, 0 in the diagonal. First fill it up. Okay, no doubt in that. S and M, you have a value 3 here. Fill this value 3. 8, 7. 
11. Is this now looking good? Isn't it? Earlier it was confusing how to make a first step. Now this is very clear. If you draw, if you uh, put a kind of a modified kind of a table and fill the values accordingly. Now you can use this table, distance table for solving the problem. Got it. Even if any sequences are missing in the rows and columns, you should fill it up. You have to bring in the form of this matrix and now try to solve. Okay. The next method is the neighbor joining method. Even a neighbor joining method is a st statistical method. Is a kind of a, you have some steps to follow. Okay. Uh, at least one method you can thorough on that. Okay. Get thorough on how to solve. Most of the examination they ask you upgma to solve uh now let me take you to the character based methods in character based methods you have two types one is maximum parsimony and the other is maximum likelihood so what is maximum parsimony in the technique of maximum parsimony the minimizing of the total character state changes takes place during the phylogenetic analysis actually here in maximum parsimony you consider only the matches. If you have maximum number of matches, go for either parsimony or likelihood. When compared to any other distance method, UPGMA, neighbor joining. In neighbor joining, uh, UPGMA, all these things we use if you have more mismatches. If you compare multiple sequences, okay? If you have compare, if you have more mismatches, think to use the distance space. But now, if you compare more uh, later, like uh, comparing the ancestral species, go for parsimony or likelihood. So then what is the difference between the parsimony and likelihood? OK, that's what we are uh, discussing in the slides. OK, of course, I mentioned you that uh, if you are, uh, want to construct a tree, the evolutionary relationship between a common ancestor. So one day, if you link with a common ancestor, you find more number of matches. In that case, you ha have to think about to use this method called parsimony. Therefore, maximum parsimony will generate the tree much quicker than any other methods because you're comparing the matches. So you're uh, having less number of matches. So you try to uh, generate a tree as soon as possible in this method. So when drawing a maximum parsimonious tree, the tree is always the shortest possible tree with a minimum number of taxa. This you should understand. However, the reliability of the maximum parsimony tree is very high. The statistical consistency and the accuracy of the phylogenetic relationship is based on maximum parsimony that will vary. So there are complex algorithms that analyze the maximum parsimony of a phylogenetic relationship. So parsimony, here I'm showing an example like if you have sequence like uh, A, B, C, D, and E, and each and every position, so you can find the DNA characters, okay, nucleic acid characters in the DNA. So if you have, okay, so and if you see this site one, okay, so here initially A, B, C, D, E, you have the further site one, that is this, is, this is what I mean, site one, okay, so you have G, 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 A, A. Suppose if uh, a G, if this G, okay, has more uh, tendency to mutate to A, if this G is more having tendency to mutate to A, instead of linking this G to this G, okay, uh, linking this G to this G, you are going to link with this A, okay, got it, instead of drawing G like this, Okay, if you have more probability, the probability is uh, like if you have the maximum probability as one, and if you have probability of our 0.6 and above, okay, instead of drawing this fragment, okay, so I just erase this because the probability is less, okay, instead of getting like this, you get a fragment like this. You got it? So, what is the maximum parsimony? What is the maximum probability of linking a branch in the tree? That's what we follow in maximum parsimony. And similarly, not only we generated, uh, we can see a kind of a tree for the site one, even for the other sides, we can construct tree uh, trees, branches or, uh, in, in the tree like that, based on the transition, based on the mutation probability. 
based on the mutation probability of the transition, we can able to generate the relations. It doesn't mean that, uh, uh, like here, I told you an example, all the Gs has to be linked in a single thing. So here you can see the Ts are linked, but uh, the Cs are linked separately. Might the probability of transition of uh, the mutation is less. So the T is linked with T, and of course, CNC is linked, but this C is remaining separate. Because this is having some kind of probability, it might be a pointer. But uh, this probability is uh, more prone to link with CC when compared to TT. So this probability is, uh, you can find a probability of linking with these trees more when compared to this one. This is how we can understand. OK, so the generation of trees is dependent on the transition. This is dependent on the mutations. So likewise, you can able to check. So you know where exactly you can use the parsimony. This parsimony, you can take an example like uh, spike glycoprotein of SARS-CoV-2 virus. Spike glycoprotein. How I am mentioning this as an example? If you see the spike glycoprotein, you have almost uh, 1,333 amino acids. If you see the mutations, OK, we have alpha strain, beta strain, gamma strain. In alpha, you know, you have nearly uh, six to seven uh, kind of mutations. And I think in beta, you have more, eight and more. So if you have six to seven mutations, it means that single point mutations. OK, well, for each and every single point amino acid mutation, you find a different strain. So nearly you can find seven different strains in the alpha itself. So out of 1,333, OK, if you see an alpha one strain, you can find 1,332 matches with the original strain. Only one is matched. OK, so where you can find more similarities, isn't it? Such a case, you can go for maximum possible. Maximum likelihood. So this is another method of character based. This is one of the most used statistical methods. Just like uh, parsimony are using this. But this is a, a, a kind of a statistic uh, uh, probability model. What we use in likelihood is slightly different with the parsimony. OK? That is, if you see this, the maximum likelihood is, of course, is using a quality model. And of course, it is also using a statistical method. OK. Uh, and uh, if you see, this is obtained on the given data of a particular organism. There are some advantages and disadvantages of this method over the parsimony. OK. So that we can see in the next slide. Uh, in maximum likelihood, they have constructed a kind of a tree. OK. So in the even if uh, it is a character based, the character based method is used. OK, but you know, uh, some values are provided here. These are not the distance. 67, 93, 98, 57 are not the distance, but the number of characters matching with each other. So in the distance based table, you can find the distance is progressively increasing. OK, but uh, these are characters based. OK, so in likelihood, they have constructed this kind of a tree. And now just compare parsimony and likelihood. Now we can discuss about this. Maximum parsimony is a technique of drawing a phylogenetic tree with a minimal number of character state changes. I told you an example also for that. But maximum likelihood is a technique of phylogenetic tree construction. The maximum likelihood between genetic data, comparing uh, father with the son, comparing uh, grandfather with the son, OK, this uh, this kind of an example, like uh, if you take a uh, uh, genetics, OK, so Mendelian law of genetics, OK, whatever. If you compare with the same kind of a species, OK, so if you're uh, so better use this kind of a likelihood for that kind of an examples. OK, using a plant a comparison, using an animal human comparisons and characters consider very low in number. We are not using maximum characters, but here in maximum likelihood, you use high number. Use the characters in comparison is high, comparatively high when compared to the parsimony. OK, so generally high enough for like a DNA sequences. If you take DNA sequences, OK, uh, the DNA sequences, I told you generally it, uh, no DNA sequences less than 10,000 nucleic acid bases generally. So if you take a large number of characters like a DNA sequences comparison, 
Okay, one can think about to use the maximum likelihood for when compared to parsimony. Branches, the branches are long. Yes, you have a short trees with the short branches. Reliability, very less reliability because less number of characters are considered in tree construction. But here, more characters are considered so high reliability. So this is the difference between parsimony and likelihood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so up to present, okay, we have discussed uh, major uh, information on uh, the character based methods and in distance based method, we have discussed UPGME, how to solve a problem using UPGME. Now, uh, I am going to explain you about how to construct phylogenetic trees using software tools. So the software tools, what I'll be showing you today is, so just see these tools. So if you want to construct a phylogenetic uh, tree, okay, so generally in lab exercises, many try with this software. Phylip, phylip, we mean phylogeny, phylogeny inference package. Okay. In phylogeny inference package, you have totally 35 programs. You have 35 programs in phylogeny. Like you can draw the rooted trees, okay, using a program called drawgram. Rooted trees can be drawn, okay, using uh, a program called drawgram. And if you want to draw the unrooted tree, then you can go for draw tree, program, draw tree. Likewise, if you want to construct phylogenetic trees using neighbor joining method, you can use a method, you can use a program called neighbor. This is the spelling of the program. Don't use the URL. If you're, use, if you're using an offline interface, so you know, in Philip you have both online and offline tools. I mean, you can download an open source software and with even without internet, if you have a sequences, you can construct a tree. Okay, that is an offline based and online also we have these programs to work on. Okay, neighbor program, it can be an online or offline, use this program. Okay, N-E-I-G-H-P-O-R. And similarly, uh, even in the neighbor itself, okay, you have a choice to select UPGME. Even if you want to construct a phylogenetic tree using UPGME, the same neighbor program can be used for construction of trees using UPGME. Of course, this also is for using uh, neighbor joining method. No doubt in this. In this, this program is also used for uh, both neighbor joining as well as QPGME. So likewise, we have plenty of tools, okay, plenty of programs. Uh, the few more programs, what you can remember is ProtList. Prot is meant for uh, calculating the distance of proteins. DNA dist. To calculate the distance of uh, DNA, you remember, so initially, if you want to draw the trees, okay, even in using the QPGME method, what I did, I draw a kind of a matrix. Okay, in the matrix, I fill the distance values. That is the first step. If only if we complete the first step, then only we can go for building the tree step by step by a pairing proteins, isn't it? If you are taking a protein sequence in consideration, use a broad test for constructing the distance table. If you are using a DNA sequences, you use a DNA test. So how many programs you have seen now in Phylip, Program, Draw Tree, Neighbor, Draw Test, DNA Test. And the sixth program, what I'm going to explain is if you want to use character-based methods, if you want to use character-based methods like parsimony, OK? So for parsimony and likelihood, OK? We also have uh, uh, the programs, okay? We also have programs like uh, parsimony, 
and uh, likelihood parsimony and likelihood actually PAML okay and uh, PAUP these are the programs okay phylogenetic analysis using parsimony phylogenetic analysis using maximum likelihood okay so likewise okay even for character based you can able to draw the trees and even for the distance base we have separate programs for drawing the trees for this you initially have to calculate the distance okay and even if you want to draw the root trees and run root trees we have a different programs to work on in this phylogeny inference package similarly we have uh online tools to draw a multiple sequences if you have hundreds of sequences or thousands of sequences still you can able to construct a tree you can't able to use a file for large number of sequences okay if you want to draw uh, for a maximum number of sequences so for example if you want to construct a phylogenetic tree for a vertebrae kingdom that's possible it's there in, even in the website you can take a, a kind of a tree from the website itself okay grape tree I told tool, mega software, MAFFT. You know, each and every software has a unique kind of an inputs. Okay, uh, in uh, in file generally we can take dot dnd as an input, and also dot fast dot txt. I have tried with all these kind of an inputs. Okay, dot dnd meant for dendrogram. Dot fast, I think you know the sequence format, the multiple sequences, we keep it in initial sequence format as dot fast, isn't it? Even I tried with txt, it's working okay. But these formats, you can't use it in all the programs. May neighbor, you can't use the dot dnd or a, uh, a kind of a file, and program uses another kind of a file format. So one should know even what kind of input file format has to give to get a kind of a you know okay similarly even in these tools grape tree i told tree i told uh, mega software maft okay so now let me discuss about this uh, uh, kind of thing and of course bootstrapping and other information we discuss it on tomorrow so mega software okay in mega software uh, we have constructed a kind of a tree okay with the five sequences you remember so on the previous session i was explaining you how to go for multiple sequence alignment using cluster w cluster omega so what i did i initially have taken the sequences from the uniprot okay i just uh, taken the human insulin and i selected uh, the four different species and uh, or whatever i have in the fasta format i just going to use the mega software for tree construction so for installing uh, mega you can one can go to this your mega software.net and if you want to construct a tree with uh, a mega software you have to download uh, this software and you have to install so this you can work in windows so the illustration of mega software will be uh, uh, see, will be seeing in this uh, next session that is on coming monday so this is the last session for this week so next session i teach you how to use the mega software for phylogenetic tree construction so before that one can download and install this software only one software no other plugins are needed for that i tall so i tall uh, for this this is the url okay so i tall is an online thing so one can uh, initially go to this url and register yourself you know the advantages of registration is like whatever you worked uh, in the past uh, uh, 30 days or past 60 days you can find out everything in the form of a uh, jobs okay like uh, if you're working the projects on uh, bioinformatics projects on regular basis you can see what you worked on yesterday what you worked on day before yesterday immediately if you click that you get a kind of output and you infer and from that you can start today's work okay so all the uh, uh, kind of a repository okay, of history of information, what you earlier worked can be also can be seen if you register initially and log in appropriately. Okay, and uh, you can see this kind of uh, I tool only the registration alone is needed. So whatever sequences I have taken there, okay, the tree is constructed here in online. Okay, 
so one can go to this and can register yourself and this is the tree of life that is for all the organisms you know the tree is constructed in a circular shape because lot of organisms are there thousands of species are there so what well, if you have more species okay you can also have this kind of a fellow uh, this looks uh, the look and feel effect is good isn't it when compared to this kind of a trees okay if you have thousands of uh, branches is it looks uh, fine but this looks fine comfortable isn't it you can zoom in and you can see how one is linked with another tree okay how the one species is linked with another species in the tree i told this uses nevic format nevic n e w sorry n n e w i c k okay nevic format n e w that is the extension for that okay and uh, uh, this is actually multiple sequence alignment using fast fourier transform okay that is multiple sequence analysis using fast fourier transform again you are going to concept a tree from this software you have to download uh, a compressed file in the given url and you have to uncompress it to execute the programs in maa okay so this is something related to softwares used in phylogenetic tree construction okay so any doubts at present do you have any doubts point 1 means i don't understand from which software are you asking point 1 what is the meaning of 68 78 these are how many matches how many matches you find when you compare one sequence with another sequence in the character based maximum likelihood method you know the tree whatever i have given as an example in my powerpoint slide is from wikipedia you can even you can find uh, the wiki no not from wikipedia uh, from the main source linked with wikipedia okay so you have some kind of an hyperlinks uh, we have uh, this uh, 6878 or the characters compared i mean how many characters are matching with each other generally you won't find the values but in likelihood alone you can find in parsimony you don't find any kind of these values uh i don't understand point one mismatches you can admit and uh, question me if you have any doubts do you have any doubts sir there uh, in mega you showed one picture below one point is there 0.10 and uh, above one line mark is there ah this is the scale mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you 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 not only you can have a distance scale okay even if you are constructing an evolutionary tree even time scale can also be fixed you can fix a time scale also but uh, here whatever sh shown here is the distance value scale so like even if you are using a uh, 10 months same okay uh, you have a kind of a scale to measure the cell size isn't it similarly the length even if you have see the google map they might have given a kind of a scale so this scale uh, represents some 10 km span or 1 km span something like that okay this is a distance but also the time scale can be fixed okay but that has to be manually fixed and you can generate a tree accordingly sir here why we, do, we don't have characters numbers between among, among them this is constructed based on the distance space the tree what i shown here is based on neighbor joining method okay why the distance is not shown here if you want to show the distances you can keep it as label if you don't want to show the distances you can keep uh, 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 the scale is kept in default so you can ignore like that even if you have want uh, have a distances you can label it that is an additional option parameter you can apply in the mega sort okay and anything else okay so if no doubts okay even you can try with the filelip software also online and offline tools presently we are running the 3.68 filelip package version okay so one can try that also okay uh, however uh, on the next session 
so from the beginning uh, to the end we'll be also working on the tools okay i will show you in the hands on experience don't miss my session okay so thank you for interaction and uh, patience and uh, so have a nice weekend bye